Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Annie Elise and this is Tend to Life where we talk all things, all things, all things, all things, all the things, true crime. So if you are stopping by for the first time, welcome. I hope you appreciate today's case coverage and enjoy the video and the channel and consider subscribing. And for all of my returning Tend to Lifers, welcome back. Happy to have you guys here today as always. If you caught my live stream earlier when we covered the Quentin Simon press conference, you may have heard me explain that I was going to do a follow-up video where I could really lay out clearly every single detail that we know so far, the screenshots, the videos, the photos, the theories, the timelines, I mean literally everything. Because unfortunately when you're doing a live, if you're window hopping, it can just really get drawn out and take a long time. And I know a lot of you guys appreciate when it's a little bit tighter and pulled together and concise. So that is what this video is. We are going to go through, sorry, I'm just getting comfortable here, guys. We are going to go through everything that we know regarding the case of Quentin Simon. Um, Everything that we know up until right now, this very moment, the new press conferences, the new information, all of it. Tend to Life with Annie Elise starts right now. So as most of us know by now, on Wednesday, October 12th, almost exactly one week since little 20-month-old Quentin Simon seemingly vanished, his grandmother and legal custodian, Billy Joe, confirmed everybody's worst fear. And the most heartbreaking turn this case could have actually gone in is the direction that it went. Billy Joe was replying to several comments on Facebook about her grandson and said that Quentin has passed, also that he's in a landfill, and worse, that his mother is the one who caused his death. So according to Billy Joe, her daughter Leilani and Quentin's mother, who's 22 years old, has no memory of what happened, which I call BS and we're going to get to why in just a minute here. Since Quentin's disappearance, police stated that the investigation has changed from a missing persons investigation to a criminal investigation. But before Billy Joe confirmed this information on Facebook, there were several other developments that I think are worth sharing because honestly, I believe that finding Quentin's body is going to be just the beginning of this case. And I think all of these other details help build the timeline and help illustrate what may have happened. So we're going to go through all of that. We know that babies don't just disappear. They don't just wander off unless it's due to some sort of neglect or lack of supervision, and they don't just end up in landfills by accident. So the road to justice is typically never a short one, and all of the information leading up to this point, it's just as important as the fact that they now have a suspected location of where his remains are. And hopefully, It will start to now make some sort of sense out of this senseless tragedy and death of this precious, tiny, little 20-month-old boy. So before we go over the timeline again with some corrections that have come out, I wanted to explain and just make sure everyone understands all of the people who were living in the home and the dynamic between everyone. Here is the family tree, and I have included the addition of Diana, which is Quentin and his siblings' babysitter as well, because even though she's not technically family, She was involved just as much, I mean, honestly, if not more, than his mother was. So here you can see the full breakdown. In the home owned by Billy Joe and her husband Tommy, the couple along with Billy Joe's daughter Leilani, Leilani's fiancé Danny, their daughter together Skye, and Leilani's two sons Zane and Quentin, plus Billy Joe's other son Paul, all live together in Savannah, Georgia. Nathaniel is actually currently in prison for murder, actually, and we don't know much about Joe, although I do have some screenshots, and I shared them one of them, I think, on Instagram yesterday, and I'll put them in here, where Joe is Leilani's brother, and they are estranged, or not estranged, I should say, but like, no love lost. He, in these text messages, is saying how she's a liar, how she, you know, she's scum, how the FBI was actually telling the family to play nice with her, to get her to talk, but that he hates her all of these things. A pretty rough family dynamic. And you can also see by this TikTok that Billy Joe made not too long ago, she's comparing their family to the Gallagher family from Shameless. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with that show. It was a great show. It was on Showtime, but it is a very dysfunctional family. Just curious, what TV show could you compare your family to? I'm going to say mine is about as dysfunctional as Shameless.
So now that we know all of the people involved, let's go back over the timeline with some clarifications that we have learned about the timeline. Here is the long-term timeline. And this really goes through the events leading up to Quentin's disappearance and what may have played a part in all of this. You can see that on September 7th, Billy Joe called the police due to an argument between she and Leilani. Police arrived. Leilani said that she was on probation and that she didn't want to get in trouble. Um, Leilani's brother Paul told the police that his sister has a history of stealing money and using the money to then buy substances. Then Billy Joe went to court to file an eviction notice against Leilani, Danny, and apparently the kids were listed on it, that as well. Leilani and Danny found out about the eviction notice about a week later, yet they were still living at Billy Joe's. Leilani ended up making a Facebook post two days after that talking about horse playing. And I thought this was very telling because she made it a point to make this public, saying, I can't even horse play with my man and kids without someone coming in the room and assuming the worst almost as though she's trying to explain and cover up why the kids might have bruises, why they might be injured, why somebody might be seeing the kids getting punished in a very strict and harsh way. It just seems like a very odd thing to post publicly on Facebook. Then a few days later on the 22nd, Leilani was due in court for that hearing regarding child support for her children, Zane and Quentin, but she didn't show up. And so they ruled against her, obviously, and she was ordered to pay child support to Billy Joe, her mother and the boy's legal guardian. You can see here then what starts breaking down on October 5th, and we're going to go into that right now. So going through the day of October 5th, the night before we know that all the kids were with Diana and they were all picked up around 6 p.m. When they were picked up, Danny and Leilani said to Diana, all right, perfect, we'll see you tomorrow with every intention of Diana babysitting the next day. However, at 5.29 a.m., Diana receives that text letting her know that she wouldn't need to babysit Quentin, Zane, and Skye that day. She says that she did think that the last minute change of plans was unusual, especially since she had babysat the children all the time, every day, even the days that Leilani was off work. But in any event, she got that text. And I'm going to come back to that text in a second because there's something we need to talk about with it. Then at 6 a.m., Danny reportedly saw Quentin in the pack and play, and then he heads off to work. Between 6 and 8.30 a.m., Leilani apparently notices that Quentin is missing. She ends up reaching back out to Diana, asking if she had seen him. She says no, obviously is freaked out, comes to the house, offers to help them look. They say no, which is also, hello, a huge red flag. And then she reports Quentin is missing. Also, we had talked a little bit about how at that point Leilani hadn't called the police. Diana had to tell her to call the police. Leilani also hadn't called her mother, Billy Joe, to let her know what was going on. So Diana called Billy Joe to let her know what was going on. And it was just a mess. So now the only change to this that has now become unclear is whether or not Danny or Leilani sent that text message to Diana at 5.29 a.m. Because some people have said in the Facebook groups that Leilani is actually the one who sent the text to Diana and that Danny was completely unaware of it. And it makes sense that it would come from Danny's phone because apparently he was the one always coordinating the babysitting. And he apparently had a, you know, he was very invested in this, these children's well-being. Take it for what it is, that's what's being said. And then we know next, after that text, Danny saw Quentin in the pack and play before leaving for work at 6 a.m. And once we get into the theories here, guys, I'm going to come back to that because I think that that text and that 6 a.m. reported sighting is key here. And again, we'll go through why. Just hang tight. So over the next week, the search for Quentin began on the group around the home, utilizing helicopters, tracker dogs, everything. We also saw that there was more likely luminol testing being done at the home because there were things blacked out over the windows, and they usually do that when they are doing a luminol test because they have to get the lighting right, so I suspect that's what was being done. Several neighbors also stated that they could see and hear the fire department pumping the pool in the backyard of the residence, which was only eight feet from the back door of the home keep that in mind eight feet from the back door of the home we'll get there so after the pool was pumped by authorities it was odd everybody was still searching for quentin everybody was looking for answers they pumped the pool obviously they're looking for dna they're looking for remains whatever they're looking for you would think that as a grandparent you'd be very concerned still about the well-being of your grandson but 
that wasn't the post that Billy Joe made. Billy Joe didn't post on Facebook, please find my grandson, I miss him, I need him, my heart is broken, what could have happened? If you know anything, tell me. If you've heard anything, say it. No. Her post was asking if anyone knew somebody who could come and fix her pool. That's what she was concerned about in that moment, which just seemed like a very inappropriate and out-of-pocket thing to be asking about when everybody is still thinking and wondering where Quentin is, and she ended up deleting that post. She then made a bizarre post about there being a storm before the calm, which is very bizarre considering the circumstances. The saying is usually the calm before the storm, but when Quentin is actually found, apparently the storm will just begin. On the channel Crime, Lines, and Lies, a man who said that he was a friend of the family and was present during the days after Quentin's disappearance said that the brother had an ADT security app on his phone where he actually could see that the back door was open between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. So their security oh. system, the ADT. Yes. Their son, their, their oldest, I think, their oldest son pulled it up and could show that because I heard at one time everybody was pointing that front door, front door. Front door was null and void. The time frame on the front door showed somebody else who admitted in front of me, that was me. I went outside to smoke a cigarette. The ADT show back door was left open from 2 to 5 in the morning. So he is saying that he could see that the back door was open between 2 and 5 a.m. Again, not confirmed at this point by law enforcement, but... That becomes a critical time marker in a theory that I have, which I will come back to. And also, remember, the pool is eight feet from the back door that is allegedly open for, you know, what, two to three, three to four, for three hours. God, you'd think I'd have been able to do that quicker. It's been a long day. So now, also, we have the video of the altercation that Diana spoke about in her first live when she released that on Facebook. And in the video, you can hear Billy Joe accusing Diana of taking Quinn and accusing her of trying to have a memorial for him before they knew that he was truly dead. And Diana said that she completely misunderstood, but that she wanted to hold a prayer circle. But it seems Billy Joe was just overcome with emotion and denial about her daughter possibly doing something to Quentin. And she took all of her anger, all of her pain, all of her frustration out on Diana instead of on Leilani. And you can see that in this video, which, by the way, Billy Joe, if you're watching this, you owe Diana a heck of an apology. This is my baby, not yours! This video is absolutely jarring. It shows the desperation of the people who love Quentin Simon. You're awful to say you're going to put a memorial. My baby's not dead. Quentin's grandmother in Quentin's babysitter's house. The intense moments recorded by Dana McCarta's daughter. Dana says Quentin's grandmother barged through her back door, mad over the thought of a memorial for the missing toddler. My baby's not dead. I think that she's trying to take the heat off of them. Diana talking with us today, telling me she's called Georgia's Department of Family and Children's Services about Quentin and his siblings before. Defects told you there was a case. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Diana isn't the only neighbor here to tell us they were concerned about the children in this home. I was afraid she was going to get hit. We tried to get Billy Joe Howell's side of this story. She didn't answer her phone. Since yesterday, when federal investigators, firefighters, and Chatham police drained Quentin's grandparents' backyard pool, grandmother Billy Joe Howell's Facebook had a post asking for help getting that pool fixed. It's been deleted. I should not have been out of town. Yeah, you did. You shouldn't have. But the emotions in this neighborhood, they haven't gone anywhere. I want to see that on the As all of this was unfolding, photos were being released of Danny being in Atlanta with friends. And there were videos and photos of him playing a pool at like a pool hall type bar, playing video games, seemingly appearing very carefree and not with Leilani. Key factor here. And a woman stated that he was actually staying with her and her husband. So your first thought would be, probably, if, Dian if Danny really loved Leilani, why would he leave her during the hardest thing a parent or anyone would have to endure? Losing a child, a possible abduction, 
if he if they did do something together to Quentin, clearly they're, you know, thick. Why wouldn't he be by her side and standing by her? So it seems more like he thought or knew that she was responsible and wanted to get the hell away. Because a lot of bo- a lot of friends, a lot of um, people who knew Danny have said he would never be involved in something like this, which, again, that's not to say much. That things like that happen all the time. But people who know him say, you know, he would never be involved in this. He cared about those kids. And look at this. He hightailed it out of there as soon as this started going off and didn't really seem very stressed out. I mean, which is kind of tacky because he should at least be stressed out for the kids and his daughter. But didn't seem like he was, you know, worried that he was going to get caught up in something. And at this point, too, there's been rumors and conversation that both Danny and Leilani took a polygraph test and both passed, apparently. Not that that means anything and can go into court, but apparently he has nothing to worry about. Typically, we see husbands and wives and spouses stick by their partners through the good and the bad. And the fact that he left her during this time says a lot about his loyalty towards her and their relationship. So, reportedly, Danny and his family is also trying to gain sole custody now of their daughter, Skye. And at this point, he allegedly wants nothing more to do with Leilani. Fast forward to Wednesday night, and in these comments on Facebook, Billy Joe confirms that Quentin is, in fact, in a landfill and that Leilani has done it, but that she does not remember. So, my first thought is, okay, great, she's lying. She's going for the insanity plea, the, you know, the I can't remember it defense. Then I started thinking about it more, thinking, could Leilani be experiencing some level of postpartum or some other form of mental illness? When you suffer from something like that, your reality is distorted. You view things things that aren't real. You perceive situations differently than how they are in reality. It completely warps your mind. And I'm not saying that as an excuse because I truthfully don't believe she suffered from this, not for a single second. And we'll talk more about that too. But Leilani did have three children in three years by three different fathers, and apparently when Leilani was little, Billy Joe also lost custody of her children as well, so it seems to be that this is a family cycle. So three children in three years, it could definitely be possible hormonal imbalance made worse by a drug problem, which she reportedly has, or even mental illness thrown into that. So it makes you wonder, was Quentin's death an accident that Leilani wanted to cover up and pretend it was an abduction so that she wouldn't get in trouble for neglect or for leaving the door open, for being passed out on drugs, for something happening to him, and not only get in trouble for that, but also lose the custody of her daughter now that she shares with Danny. She already lost custody of the boys, but she still had custody of Skye. Apparently, a drug test was also administered by CPS on Thursday, and I'm curious if she failed and if that's the reason that Skye was taken into custody, because reportedly, the two children have now been taken into custody and are with a family member. But I'm wondering, would she have been arrested if she failed? Who knows what the truth is there? Even if Leilani was experiencing mental health issues, Diana explained that the children were often filthy, sent without supplies, had bruises, etc. So even if she had a singular mental health episode that caused Quentin's death, there was a history of neglect and abuse far before this incident took place. Officers said that the evidence they collected over the last eight days led them to the conclusion that Quentin was dead. What evidence is that? Did they find text messages? Because we know they seized their tech. Obviously, it wasn't a confession, or I believe she would have been arrested by now, or certainly charged, absolutely. I don't believe the luminol testing at the house showed blood, because surely, if so, she also would have been arrested for that. If she doesn't remember what happened, also, how did they know for sure that Quentin was in a landfill? Or how are they so confident that his remains are in a landfill, if she didn't confess and say anything? I have my theory, which we are about to get to. Good afternoon. I'm Chatham County Police Chief Jeff Adley. I'm joined today by FBI Supervisory Senior Resident Agent Will Clark of the Savannah FBI Office. As you know, our investigation over the last eight days has led us to the heartbreaking conclusion that 20-month-old Quentin Simon is deceased. We have named his mother, Lalani Simon, as the primary suspect in Quentin's disappearance and death. We have not made an arrest or filed any charges at this time. From the moment we received the 911 call reporting Quentin missing, we have conducted an exhaustive search for him. Sadly, we still have not found Quentin. 
but our search and our investigation will continue and it will continue with every available resource we have in order to give Quentin's family closure and see that justice is served in this case. I would like to thank the FBI for their invaluable expertise and assistance during our search and for the help they will continue to provide moving forward. We know that millions of people fell in love with Quentin Simon the moment they saw his face and learned of his disappearance. We have seen the outpouring of love and concern for this child and the outpouring of grief at the latest developments in this case. The men and women of the Chatham County Police Department share that same sadness, but we also feel very determined to keep working as hard as we can and for as long as we have to, to find Quentin. Now Special Agent Clark will have some comments and then I'll return uh, with some closing statements. Good afternoon. My name is Will Clark. I am the senior supervisory resident agent in charge of the FBI's Savannah and Brunswick offices. From the moment the FBI became involved in this investigation, our primary goal was to assist the Chatham County Police Department in bringing Quinton home and holding anyone responsible for his disappearance accountable. <clears throat> To the Chatham County community, our heart breaks along with yours in trying to comprehend what we believe happened here. The FBI, along with our law enforcement partners, have followed every lead, every tip, and every piece of evidence to get to this point, and we will continue to do so. The FBI entered this case less than three hours after Quentin was reported missing. The FBI has provided the Chatham County Police Department resources in this case, and those resources have come in the form of investigative, analytical, and technical assistance. For the past week, over 40 FBI agents, analysts, task force officers, and professional sports staff who live in the coastal Georgia area have worked tirelessly and continuously on this investigation. Last Wednesday, we mobilized our child abduction rapid deployment team, the CARD team in short, which brings with it experts from across the country who specialize in missing children cases. As needed, and as the investigation continues to progress, the FBI stands ready to deploy additional resources. In closing, we share the sorrow felt by millions and pledge every resource to assist the Chatham County Police Department in finding Little Quentin. Thank you, Agent Clark. And in closing, I understand the intense interest in this case and know everyone has a lot of questions. I'll answer what I can. Um, but remember, our focus must be on not doing anything that jeopardizes the integrity of this investigation or bringing justice for Quentin. So with that said, I'll be happy to answer what questions I can. Did you hear from the, land, from the family last night that you might be targeting a landfill? Can you mm -hmm. tell us about that and what landfill it might be? I cannot uh, disclose any inf information relative to that. We will follow the evidence, uh, and when our evidence leads us uh, to search any, anything specifically or any specific geographic area, we will communicate that to you at that time. I cannot get into any specifics relative to evidence. What I can, what I can say is the evidence that we have so far um, based on uh, multiple search warrants and interviews has led us to the conclusion that Quentin is deceased. Um, the investigation doesn't end, you know, right there. We will continue to investigate this until its final conclusion. Because the I'm sorry, sir, because the evidence has led us to that point and to this point today. Why is she not been arrested yet? Because we will only do that when we feel we have everything that we need to. We only get one shot at this, right? We're going to do it right. 
We're going to do the best that we can. We're going to use the resources at our disposal. Um, we're thankful to the FBI. And when we get to that point and we feel comfortable um, with, in counsel with the FBI and the ADA, uh, that's when we will uh, reach that conclusion. Chief, is anyone else being considered for criminal charges? Um, at this time, no. What change to make you suspect about blood? The evidence in the case has led us to this conclusion. Was there a date where you found the evidence that led you to this conclusion? Because obviously earlier this week and last week you had said you did not suspect no. the, the accumulation of evidence over these last eight days has led us to this conclusion today. Do you have an idea of what it might be? We do not have uh, any specifics at this time. I, will not, I can't answer that question um, with any level of specificity. Do you know where Leilani's other two children are? Mm -hmm. I can't answer that question. Do you know where Leilani is? I don't know where she is currently today. Is there any chance anyone else besides Leilani could be charged? There is no one else a suspect at this time. Leilani is the main focus of this investigation. Are you not concerned that you've now named your number one suspect out loud to the public? Is there not a concern she might take off? Um, I can't get into any specifics, but we don't believe she's a flight risk at this time. All right, thank you. Appreciate your questions. Have a great day. So let me walk you through what I think is a possibility and tell me what you think. And the reason I came to this theory and the way I came to this is because we know that she has not been arrested yet. She has not been charged yet. Also that they don't believe that she is a flight risk but that they do believe that Quentin was murdered and that they do believe that she is the prime sole suspect and that they believe he is in a landfill. We also are hearing that Danny was not involved and that he is by all means a good guy, shady character maybe with a shady person perhaps, but by all accounts would never be involved in something like this. And he hightailed it out of there and basically ditched her and is now trying to get full custody, which to me speaks volumes. So here's what I think went down. And I, I, again, just my theory. I think they picked up the kids at 6 p.m. on Tuesday night. They told Diana, all right, like, see you later. Thanks for watching the kids. We'll see you tomorrow. They go home. We now know, according to Leilani's brother, Paul, on his security app, that the back door was reportedly left open from 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. We also then know that that text message was sent just 29 minutes later after the door was shut, back closed, and that people are saying it actually came from Leilani on Danny's phone but that it wasn't Danny himself texting and then Danny says that he saw Quentin at 6 a.m. when he goes to work. So I think they get home that Tuesday evening whether she's doing drugs, whether she's just not paying attention, whether she left everything unlocked, who knows. The door opens at 2 a.m. I think it's possible that Quentin stumbled outside. The pool is eight feet from the back door. It's dark he's young, he has no idea, you know, perception and all that, falls into the pool. I think that Leilani maybe wakes up then around, say, three or four, who knows when, sees that Quentin's not where he's supposed to be, or sees that the back door is open or something jolts her. So she goes to the back, she sees him in the pool. She grabs him, she brings him inside at five o'clock, she shuts the door. Done. Puts him then in the pack and play, and it looks as though he's asleep, even though he's already deceased. She texts, she grabs Danny's phone, she texts the babysitter, she says, we don't need you today. She, you know, if she did send that text and if Danny didn't, she says, we don't need you today. Danny sees Quentin in the pack and play, thinking that he's sleeping, not knowing he's deceased. He leaves for work. Then she puts her plan in motion. She can't go far because she still has the other two kids at the house with her. So she can't drive Quentin's remains somewhere. She can't hide them anywhere. So she can't do much. So she says, okay, all I can do, it's trash day, is put him in the trash can. And then I'm going to wait to call the police until the garbage picks it up and collects it and takes it. So then that's when she reaches out to Diana. It says that the garbage truck came between 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. So then she reaches out to Diana. Hey, have you seen him? She says no. She comes over, offers to help look. And Leilani says no, because obviously she knew that he wasn't going to be found, in my opinion. And then the, you know, the trash truck is now at the landfill. So I think it's very possible that this was a death that happened due to neglect rather than truly inflicted. I also think that it was a cover-up on her end. As far as the evidence and what led police to the conclusion they're at, again, she hasn't been charged, she hasn't been arrested, 
They believe he's deceased. They believe he's in a landfill. I imagine they sourced something off the tech or possibly had a conversation with Danny, something to lead them to the landfill. I think the evidence that they have is circumstantial. And that's the problem. I think that they probably spoke with Danny. I think that they probably got something off the tech, something to corroborate the story of the trash can and the trash being taken out. And that's why they believe he's in the landfill. I think that this whole can't remember thing is bullshit. But I think the reason they can't charge her and they can't arrest her is because it's all circumstantial evidence. They don't have a body yet. They don't have a murder weapon. They don't have a cause of death. They don't have a, a t- an insane amount of blood that we know of. I believe if they did through that luminal testing, they would have arrested her. It's all circumstantial at this point. And that's why they can't really do anything until they actually find his remains. I think too, it's probably likely that Danny did say something or they did see something off of his tech because maybe she confessed or said, oh my God, here's what I did. Like I had to cover it up because then Danny left. He's like, I don't want anything to do with this. I'm out of here. Peace. Now he's trying to get custody of Sky as well. So I definitely think there was some sort of information exchanged here, but still not enough to make an arrest. As far as them saying that she is the prime suspect, but not arrested and not a flight risk, because she's saying this whole can't remember me thing and this whole defense, I think she must have probably checked herself in somewhere because otherwise you just publicly blasted her as the prime suspect. She would clearly be a flight risk. She would have nothing to lose at this point. She has no custody of her kids. Her boyfriend left her. She'd have nothing to lose but to run or to even take her own life. So I think that she may have checked herself into a treatment center, which is why they don't believe that she's a flight risk and why they can't legally disclose where she is. Because if she checked herself in, that goes in tandem with the can't remember it defense that she had. And that could be where we saw her getting in the truck yesterday and driving off to go and check herself into this place. And thinking back to the beginning of this, if Leilani or Billy Joe actually thought for a split second that Quentin was abducted, why weren't they out there helping look? Leilani, his own mother, didn't make a statement. She didn't post flyers. Just she didn't show her face at all. So what's going to happen when they find Quentin? An autopsy and cause of death will, of course, tell a lot whether it was an accident or if it was caused from neglect or, you know, inflicted pain, whatever it is, that's assuming they locate him at all because a landfill is obviously a very big place and now more than a week has gone by, it's going to be very tough and I'm hopeful that they do recover something. And I'm wondering too, will Billy, Joe, and Tommy be held responsible for leaving the kids with Leilani? They had custody, she did not. And I also am curious, will Danny turn on Leilani and testify against her? Because he clearly has already booked it. He wants nothing to do with her. He wants their daughter. I think he knows something, and I think he probably told the police something, but it's not enough. It's not a confession. It's not enough to book her. It's not enough to charge her. And if they arrest her now, and if they don't have a concrete case that they can prosecute, it's done. They get one shot. So I think that's why they're waiting, and I think that's why they are trying so hard to get the remains, to get the story. There, If it was an accident, I think that theory also supports why they were draining the pool and why they were looking in there. It seems to me that that would make a lot of sense as to why she hasn't been charged yet, why she hasn't been arrested yet, and, and the relationship with Danny and how he's now in Atlanta. But again, that's just my theory, guys. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'm interested to hear what you guys think. At the end of the day, this is a 20-month-old little boy who is teeny tiny. So this expression is finding a needle in a haystack, right? I'm just hopeful that they find something. Clearly, after all of their searches, they didn't find a murder weapon. They didn't find anything like that because they would have charged somebody otherwise. That's my belief. I think that this is something a little bit different, and I think it's a little bit tricky. Why else would you name your prime suspect openly without arresting them? unless you knew that they were secure somewhere. And that's what I'm thinking, guys. But let me know what you guys think. Leave your comments below. I'm curious to know. And as always, I will, of course, keep you updated the second we learn more. It's easier and faster for me to share the quick updates on my Instagram. So if you're not following that yet, make sure you are. It's it's at underscore Annie Elise. And I also post it on TikTok all the time too, which is the same handle. So that's where I'm able to like really pump out quick updates. So I can't get onto here and get them to you guys quickly. Um, Make sure you check over there. All right, guys, don't forget, let me know what you guys think below. And hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we will get answers and justice for little Quentin Simon. All right, guys, thanks again. And until the next one, stay safe.